In this video, I'll show you how I turn these four reference pictures into these 2D illustrations and how using these four different types of references improved my art. So let's talk about First things first, what is a reference? Well, according to the first thing I saw on Google, references are photographs, models, drawings or paintings, illustrations, anything you can refer to, draw from, paint from, trace, copy to see what something looks like so you can use it as an example to create art from. So now that we know what references are, let's start with the first category. I personally like to use these kinds of images because they already did all the work for you. By that, I mean the lighting, composition, and the vibes. Then you just have to remake it in your style. An example of this would be my Luffy and Chopper drawing I made last year. I heavily referenced this image as you can tell, but it is still unique because I added my own touch to it. As you can see, I've done it to a few of my pieces. The next category is pretty simple, so let's shift our focus to Landscape references does not have to stop at landscapes. It also includes cityscapes, seascapes, and skyscapes, and any other that you can think of. When I start my reference hunting for this category, I try to find a space that I think my characters can fit in. By that, I mean have an idea of what you want to draw and look for the space your characters will inhabit. I use this strategy on this artwork I made of a nun praying to her guardian angel. I wanted to have both subjects visible, but not to each other. Having the angel on top of the building worked well to show its scale compared to the nun, and the line made by the light also brings the viewer's attention to the nun. This also works if you're looking to add a background to a character you've already drawn and are looking to find something that'll fit with your piece. However, this is a bit harder since you already have a drawing. Finding a background to incorporate in your piece will have more limitations. Keep in mind, if you do want to do this, make sure your character fits in whichever background you choose. If you have a bright and saturated character like this one, and want to put them in a dark alley, you'll have to make a few adjustments to your character to fit the background. Or choose another background that you think will fit better. If something still feels a bit off, like your character might look weird, or your character is just standing there menacingly, <laughs> this next category might help you out a bit. One, two, three, four. Poses are probably one of the most interesting aspects when looking at an image. I've been trying to incorporate more dynamic poses in my art to give them a sense of story. This usually helps immerse viewers with your art. Although there are some beautiful artworks out there with very simple poses that I myself love to do as well, to achieve even the simple poses Using references are still a huge help when dealing with proportions and understanding the movements of the body. Cause to be honest, the body is pretty weird and complex. Like you're telling me that a quarter of our bones are in our feet? That's crazy. And trying to draw poses from memory is crazy too. Especially when you are a pro artist, I guess not as much, but a beginner, yeah. But I mean like crazy good, cause I'm still not completely able to do that. Oh brother, this guy stinks! 
But as you can tell, with the speed paint of my character Kyoko, I'm referencing the pose that's in the top left corner. I like the pose because I wanted my character to eat noodles for the new year. That's just to symbolize a year of good luck, you know? The more you draw, the more you'll understand the different shapes of the human anatomy, which eventually you won't need to use as many references since your knowledge should increase over time. A fun trick that some of you might not know is to cut and stitch different reference poses to make your desired pose. Let's call this the Frankenstein method. You can use the torso of an image while using the hands of another and so on. This allows you to draw exactly what you had in mind given the certain angles and poses you wanted to draw. And at the end of the day, if you can't find a certain pose, you could always take a picture of yourself. The Frankenstein method also works really well with Throughout history, items evolved from Stone Age tools to agricultural implements, from cultural artifacts to industrial products, and from manuscripts to mass-produced goods. Here is why studying items and using them as references will be the cherry on top of your drawings. Even from the early stages of learning how to draw, you will or probably were told to draw what is in front of you to improve your hand-eye coordination. So an example of this would be to draw like a tablecloth, some fruit, and a skull. A skull. Wait, if you think about it for a second, why would they add a skull with food though? Unless you're using the bones to make a delicious broth, you lost me there. But actually in art history, I remember us learning about this, but nothing stayed with me considering I was always. <laughs> Anyways, looking past the skull with the fruit set up, whatever that is, trash. Looking at objects and trying to replicate them is a fantastic upgrade to have in your art journey. Items are practical to use because it's kind of like everything. So giving your characters props or accessories makes them a bit more visually appealing, in my opinion. I also often use clothing as references since I like to make OCs and spawn them around the world. I use different clothing aesthetics and styles from different cultures to immerse my characters in the world I give them making the clothing resemble our world, but not being an exact copy to, you know, give it that touch. <laughs> Again, this category is probably the most versatile out of the four, since you can mix and match items to create new ones. It's like your favorite RPG game, but instead you get to create it with your godly artist hands. My OC Tukta was inspired by Mongolian and Tibetan clothing mixed with stuff I added for the aesthetic of my character. Even his pet owl was inspired by an apple. I guess my teachers were onto something, huh? But also keep in mind that even though these might not be items, feel free to also mix and match things like hair, eyes, expressions, you name it. Just get creative with it and you can come up with a lot of really cool things. As you can tell from my previous videos, this one is a little different. I wanted to improve the quality in my videos, well, my tutorial ones to be exact. I gave myself a goal this year of releasing 12 tutorials, one each month for the rest of the year. Each tutorial will bring you a step closer to understanding how I draw and how I make my mini OCs. This video took me about a month to make, so if you like what you saw and want to follow my art journey, then please consider liking, subscribing, and checking out my other content. All of my socials are down below, and if you wanted to use my brushes, download any of my artworks, and see videos like these a bit earlier, 
then check out my Patreon. It would mean a lot and it would really encourage me to keep making more content like this. Anywho, have yourselves a lovely day. Bye!